Good morning, folks. We're starting with the awaited seismic uptick. Struck 6.4 in the Indian Ocean, but well away from the thrust zone at the fault system of Indonesia. Like the last two days, we had multiple 6 mag readings resulting in a downgrade to mid-5 range at another location. We saw only one M flare yesterday. On the incoming limb, CME is not geo-effective. On to our top article, while it isn't the ban we see other countries putting on GMOs, some states are indeed working to fight back. This article about GMO contamination of organics and proposed zone recognitions to identify the genesis of the contamination that resulted in tons of crops being unable to be exported. I've been focusing on the flooding for South America, and it looks like the satellites can't ignore it either. Quite the contrast and also the embodiment of why the convergence lines coming from the South Atlantic are as relatively precipitous as the greater rainforest to the north. South China Sea, tropical storm formation. After the brief flaring low yesterday, we'll start a new candidate here. It looks like she'll dance between three of the largest cities on the planet. Down under, we see the main convergence line between nations coming to New Zealand tomorrow. The Mediterranean gets the top watch as of now for Europe. Thunderstorms should be popping along the line already, and we catch a glimpse of yet another low in the North Atlantic. United States, still watching that central convergence, actually extending up into Canada, and which will bring the bad storms tonight as it shifts slightly eastward towards the Great Lakes. Looking for Earth's magnetic connection to the star. I see Mercury, Mars, and Venus, but no blue dot for Earth. This is where Iswa gets sneaky. When planets share a connection point like we currently do with Mars, it is often impossible to see them both simultaneously. And speaking of Iswa, guys, tell me that's not a Bieber reference in your naming of the latest Signet panel. Anywho, we'll yank the connectivity and corona hole power up here to show good force to the southern grouping and a nudge of power to the northern loner. You can see that northern location will be directly Earth-facing tonight here in 211 angstroms, not on the 17th as the chart suggested a moment ago. Gotta use your eyes. Otherwise, it was a fairly calm space weather day, no filament releases, nothing doing on the solar wind telemetry that's worth mentioning, just minor variability and our shield is solid. We took yesterday's M flare from the incoming active region. It did produce a quick but non-Earth-directed CME and we do not yet have good visibility on that active region. So we'll step back and see what we do have. The baby group born six days ago departs the limb fully grown in beta class. The southern active region was our X-flare maker a few days ago. Utter silence and decay from the mature grouping as she turns in to face our planet. Mobile observatory project is underway. We're back in Columbus, Ohio for a few days readying for our next event on Tuesday. If you live anywhere near here, come to Pickerington. We'll get together. Details can be found at the Journey portion of the project website, along with a short update and photos from the date and event. It's at the blog portion. Big thank you to the Miami Valley Astronomical Society and the Boonshoff Museum of Discovery for being wonderful hosts and wonderful people in general. We indeed had some travelers like Gary, one of our sponsors from the project who came up from Cincinnati, Central Ohio on Tuesday, then Pittsburgh and Hershey, PA. We'll check in on the pillars of fire above the northwestern limb to close. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.15 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.